Welcome to Nomad PHP Lightning Talks. We're so glad that you have chosen to spend a little time with us. Nomad PHP Lightning Talks are five to ten minute talks about a specific topic. And tonight our special guest is Mr. Andrew Woods, and he's going to talk to us about leveraging your tools with automation. So a good rule of thumb is if you have to do something more than five times, you should probably automate it. So when people think about automation, cron is usually what comes to mind. It's a non-interactive tool that lets you specify when a command should run. But So if you want to run something every Monday, Wednesday, or Friday at noon, cron's the tool. But today we're going to talk about something a little bit different. It's a more interactive way to automate things. And I'm going to show you some ways to simplify things for your command line experience to make it more powerful with a little bit of scripting. So today we're going to talk about four things, aliases, functions, abbreviations, and leader commands. The first two relate to bash, and the second two relate to vim. So the thing, we're going to start off with aliases. So an alias is just a keyword that represents a longer, more complicated command. So these first two, these first two uh, aliases are allow you to type, just type Firefox or Opera and open that browser. And you, as a, just like you're using the open command, uh, you can go in and type Firefox, like so. Oops. PHP.com. And then it opens up the site within Firefox. So the, uh, the downside of aliases, though, is that you can't pass arguments, and the impl implementations can be a little bit naive because they don't allow for any sort of error handling. They just assume you're going to give it the right argument. So this, this no comment alias, for example, will basically go through and remove any line that starts with a hash mark showing you just the remaining stuff. If you've ever looked at an Apache config file, they could be over-documented and just make the resulting code a little bit hard to read. So that would be a great use case for this alias. But so here's an example of something that wouldn't work. This, this get help alias requires the man command to be passed a value. And because it's an alias, it won't get interpolated here. So what this, this needs to actually be a function. And when we talk about functions, I'll show you what that looks like. The, <clears throat> the last thing an alias is good for is for using a particular coding standard. And this, in this example, I'm using WPVI to represent them opening a file using the WordPress coding standard. <clears throat> so Functions will allow you to address some of these aliases, the problems problems with aliases. Sorry. So here's the here's the get help command that we're just talking about. That's not a, that wouldn't be a good alias because this value here could, represents all the parameters that come from the command line. And the way that this works is that if the man if, you, if it doesn't find a man page for the term that you've entered, it fails, and then it tries to open it by doing a search in your browser, whatever your default browser is. <clears throat> the, this Wi-Fi function here allows you to add some error handling to your input to make sure that it's actually passing the right, the right values by on or off. And if not, then it just tells you what you should use. So. Functions in Bash are a little bit different than they are in PHP. They're, you're executing commands and not statements. <clears throat> and also, you don't terminate lines with semicolons. The, they're, uh, it's, already, it's already sort of line-oriented. But the, the biggest difference is that you're returning error codes and not data. So you're not going to return a string most of the time. You're gonna it's going to return an error code like you're seeing here. So each one of these things represents a different value of why it's better. In this, in this example, for update site URL, this makes use of the 
uh, WPCLI, which is a command line tool for administering WordPress databases. You can <coughs> you you can pass a single URL that will update both of these options. You wouldn't be able to do this with a alias. You'd have to do you'd have to specify them separately. But this download function is probably the best example of why you'd want to use a why you even want to do this kind of automation to begin with. <coughs> because this looks this these these curl commands, they they simplify a longer process. Think about what you'd have to do if you wanted to download WordPress from your browser. You'd have to open up your browser, type in WordPress.org, go to click the download button, it saves it to your downloads folder, and then copy that file to wherever you want it installed. Whereas with this function, all you're doing is just typing download WP or download theme, and it retrieves it into your uses curl to retrieve it in, into your current directory. This site, this function called check site will will like to keep checking to see if your if your site is up yet. When it when it is, the loop ends and then it basically will pronounce it'll say, okay, the site is up now, using the Mac say commands. The <coughs> this kind of scripting lets you lets you do a little bit of automation so that you can go on and focus on other things while these things are working on in the background. Okay, now let, let's let's switch gears a little bit and talk about Vim. Oops. So <coughs> abbreviations are kind of like aliases for Vim. They trigger they they're just triggered by a keyword when you're typing them in insert mode. As you know, the Vim has different modes that you that you operate in. You and the one where you're editing your content is called insert. The so there are several cases where you'd want to use abbreviations for Vim. Some are just for spelling mistakes, but some will let you do longer commands. Like this is a keyword that will just type out my whole GitHub URL. This makes this makes it so I have to type less characters, and it and it's and it's less error prone. This abbreviation will only occur in insert mode, whereas these other ones are can be uh, can be triggered in multiple modes. The other reason why this particular one is is different because it's it will take the output of a command and it or some sort of function that you write, as denoted by this expression here. <clears throat> Some and sometimes you want to help things be more code correct. So if you don't, if you want to disallow people to write uh, short codes for their PHP, this would be a good. This would. This would get triggered whenever somebody tries to write a PHP short code, a short tag rather, <clears throat> and it will replace it with the full echo statement. The last thing we're going to talk about are leader commands, and they're kind of like they're similar to the abbreviations above, except they're triple. They are triggered in normal mode uh, as opposed to the insert mode. So, um, and they're all hidden behind what they call the map leader key. This this leader value that you're seeing here represents this key. So. If I want to execute, if I want to execute this leader command, I would type the, uh, in this case, the, uh, the semicolon and BL, which looks like this. <clears throat> so, and each one of these do something a little bit different. So I could do the leader key and then SW and it will strip all the white space by calling this one function. It'll do that throughout the entire buffer. <clears throat> and sometimes you might want to 
just quote a single word like this. Or I could do it with double quotes too, which are represented by these two meter commands below. So I hope this has been useful in, 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 in educating in you in a couple different ways to make things a little bit more productive for you uh, in your command line and Vim adventures. So that's all I have for you today, and it's been a pleasure sharing this with you. Thank you for that, Andrew. If you'd like to do a lightning talk for Nomad PHP, please email joe at nomadphp.com. If you have an idea for a new talk that you want to try out, or if you just want to try out being a speaker, this is an excellent chance for you to do so.